Good morning. Good morning. Please remain standing as you are able as we welcome Executive Vice President Emerita Helen Jenkins to, to sing the national anthem. Another standing ovation for Dean Jenkins. Please be seated. Welcome to South Texas College of Law Houston's May 2023 Centennial Commencement Ceremony. My name is Mike Berry. I have the honor of serving as South Texas's president and dean. And it is in my honor and it is my privilege to welcome all of you to this day, to welcome these graduates, their parents, their friends, their alumni, the, the, our, our alumni, the tias, the grandparents, everyone coming today to celebrate and to join me in welcoming all of these graduates and saying congratulations. Families and friends, we welcome you today. We know that your graduates have worked very hard, but we know that they are here today in large part because of the support that you have given them, the many sacrifices you have made for them. And on behalf of our students, I thank you. I would like to take a moment to welcome the stage party and recognize, first of all, the representatives of the Board of Directors of South Texas College of Law, Houston. Please stand as I call your name. First is our board chair, Janora Boykins. Randy Sorrells. Our immediate past chair, Ken Johnson. Regina Bynote Jones, the Honorable Teresa Chang, and Jennifer Stogner, a board member and the president of the Alumni Association. Thank you for your leadership and your service to our school. And will the members of the faculty please rise?
Please join me in recognizing our faculty who have worked with our graduates, strengthened them, supported them, and helped them through their time here. Please congratulate the faculty. I'd also like to welcome the Chief Justice of the Texas Supreme Court, Nathan Hecht, who will be joining us as our commencement speaker today. Now, family members, our graduates know that when we have a significant event, I often like to take a picture of it and post it on social media because until it is shared with a hashtag, it did not happen. In August of 2020, however, when many of these graduates first joined us, I spoke to them at orientation. And normally I would take a picture at orientation. But on August 10th of 2020, I was a bit challenged. I had to take a video of seven pages of Zoom screens as I scrolled one by one. I still have that video on my phone as a reminder of that time, but also a reminder of the strength and resiliency and ability to adapt that these graduates showed in the face of challenges. So graduates, I hope that you will indulge me one more time. And believe me when I say this, it is much more pleasant to take a picture of you here together in one time. All right, follow that and all of your pictures with the hashtag STCLgrad, okay? All right, graduates, as you are walking the stage today, it is an incredibly important moment in the history of our school. This is our law school's 100th anniversary. And as the class of 2023, yes, thank you, 100th anniversary. As the class of 2023, you will always be the centennial class of South Texas College of Law, Houston. I hope this distinction carries with you it a special honor, but also a special responsibility. You will set the standard now that the next 100 years of graduates will follow. No pressure at all. But that's why we've given you today this special medal, as a commemoration of this day, of this year, and what you have accomplished. It's a physical reminder that you are the living embodiment of the hopes and dreams of our founders 100 years ago. They created a brand new law school to create opportunities in the city of Houston to receive an excellent education. And those opportunities remain today an opportunity for students like you who are resilient, who are dedicated, who are willing to work hard and are committed to justice. For 100 years, our graduates have gone on to serve the legal profession and their community with distinction. And we have maintained our tradition of excellence. The proof of that high standard is you in this room today. Our founders would be proud, I am sure, of what you have overcome. Let's not forget that you began your journey when we were in the throes of a pandemic. It brought tremendous change and uncertainty, and all of us were affected by it. But you maintained your diligence throughout, whether in hybrid classes or in person. The faculty could not and did not relax their standards but you adapted to those new realities and rose to the expectations. You engaged with each other, you built community, and you pressed forward undeterred. And because you persisted, because you worked, today we are here to recognize your accomplishments. You would not be deterred, and today you cross this stage, successful, graduating, from South Texas. 
But as we look back on what you have accomplished, we also need to look forward. Today, you join the ranks of South Texas alumni, some 16,000 strong leaders in our profession, successful practitioners, leaders in government, in industry. And like them, you now bear a responsibility, a responsibility to serve. We're a mission-driven law school, as you know, with a mission of diversity, opportunity, excellence, and service. One of my favorite lines is from the 12th chapter of Luke. To those whom much is given, much is expected. And graduates, you have been gifted with much. The opportunity for a legal education in this great nation, the gift of intelligence, the support of faculty and friends and family, and a bright future in an exceptional profession. And now, as a South Texas graduate, our centennial class, we have high expectations of you. Our nation relies on the rule of law. Our cities and states require leaders of capability and integrity. And our community needs community and committed individuals to carry our democracy forward. You are poised to meet those challenges. I want to emphasize the great good you can do with your law degree, to stand up for what's right, to speak for those who lack a voice, to call out injustices, to act with integrity at all times. We are thrilled to welcome you into this noble profession. Go forth, make us proud. I have the honor now of introducing two members of our graduating class who have served our school with distinction and with excellence. The first is Taylor Ledger, a second career student. Taylor has been a member of the South Texas Law Review and an active and successful member of our award-winning advocacy program. Taylor served as the chair of the Board of Advocates, and she has been a research professor to our, assistant to our professors. Taylor has worked hard and has achieved excellence in many ways. She has achieved the highest grade in some 13 different classes, has been on the Dean's Honors List every semester, won the Best National Brief Award at the prestigious New York City Bar Association's 72nd National Moot Court Competition, and received our Outstanding Advocate Award. Today, she is being recognized as the valedictorian of the class of 2023. It is our tradition that the valedictorian has an opportunity to address her peers and all who are attending today. Please welcome Taylor to the stage. everyone. Congratulations, class of 2023. A warm welcome to our friends, family, faculty, and staff in attendance. It means so much to have you here to celebrate this shared triumph. And I say shared because you all played no small part in this accomplishment. Before we go any further, graduates, we have an important task. We've obviously put in a lot of effort to make it to this point today but others have made sacrifices to bring us to this point as well. This morning is not just about us, but it's also about them. I hope you'll stand up and give our friends, family, faculty, and staff a round of applause. Thank you. Fellow classmates, to quote Elle Woods, we did it. <laughs> 
do it. <laughs> it's such a privilege to be speaking today, but the greater privilege has been being a part of such a wonderful group of people. I am so impressed by all of you. There will be speakers standing before graduates at law school graduations all across the country in coming days and weeks. And most speakers will probably say similar things, that today is a beginning, not an end, that you should look forward. And I think that is true enough, but I think if we're gonna look forward, it's good to know where we've been and to look back as well. And I think if we look back to that first day here as 1Ls in the fall of 2020, perhaps you will recall that you were a little scared and a little anxious. COVID-19 concerns still loomed large, but that didn't stop us and look at us now. We learned what it means to persevere in the face of personal and global challenges. We are more confident in facing the next steps in our lives and careers. As far as that confidence goes, I think you'll appreciate that it's not because we succeeded at everything, but because with the help of our friends and family and faculty, we were less afraid of failing. And if we did fail, we got up and tried again. And if we failed again, we got up and tried again. And then if we failed again, we probably might have considered throwing in the towel, but we probably got up and did it again anyways. It was not success, but rather not being afraid to fall that brought us to this point. Most speakers would also typically wish you good luck in your future endeavors. I won't, and here's why. Full disclosure, these are not my words, but I think they're important. From time to time in the years to come, I hope you will be treated unfairly so that you will come to know the value of justice. I hope that you will suffer betrayal because that will teach you the importance of loyalty. I hope you'll be lonely from time to time so that you don't take your friends for granted. I wish you bad luck from time to time so that you will be conscious of the role of chance, I'm sorry, the role of chance in life and understand your success is not completely deserved and that the failures of others is not completely deserved either. And when you lose as you will from time to time, I hope every now and then your opponent will gloat over your failure. It's a way for you to understand the importance of sportsmanship. I hope you'll be ignored so you know the importance of listening to others, and I hope you will have just enough pain to learn compassion. Whether I wish these things or not, they're going to happen, and whether you benefit from them or not will depend upon your ability to see the message in your misfortunes. I don't want to leave you hanging. That message was delivered by Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts at his son's ninth grade graduation. I think the same advice still stands though for a law school graduation. We're going to mess up, we're going to lose, we're going to be so swamped and hit rough patches and wonder why we were so eager to be attorneys in the first place. But just like we got through law school, during a pandemic, we will make it through the dark times and be better for it. I'd be remiss if I didn't specifically thank a few people. I'd like to thank my family for the constant support throughout my time in law school. Uh, I'd like to thank my moot court buds, <laughs> Mick Davis, Grayson Sheena, and Garrett Gray. I couldn't have made it through law school with my sanity without y'all. My study partner turned best friend, Quinny Trong. You've always been there for me through the struggles of law school and life in general, and I cannot tell you how much your friendship means to me. All my moot court coaches, especially Judge Sharon McCauley and Andrew Bender, I learned so much from you all, and I greatly appreciate appreciate how much time you invested in me and my development. Uh, Professor Ricks and Professor Blackman, thank you for the guidance and help throughout law school. And then lastly, the advocacy department, and specifically Dominique Henson, Haley Stenhouse, and Rebecca Hogg. And last but not least, Professor Rob Galloway. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Rob, for everything. I feel like I've learned so much from you and your classes. I'm going into the legal profession with more tangible experience than I thought I would I would have ever thought possible, and that's all thanks to you. I'm trying not to tear up. <laughs> that's all I've got for you, though. So congratulations again, class of 2023. We did it. Thank you, Taylor, and congratulations. I now have the, the honor of introducing Nadine Raba, the past year's president of the Student Bar Association. Nadine led the SBA at a special time as COVID restrictions were being lifted and life 
at the law school was beginning to return to pre-pandemic activities. She worked to connect our students, our faculty, and our staff, and helped all of us establish lifelong relationships that will go far beyond the halls of law school. A serious student leader with a generous spirit, Nadine's efforts have been vital in restoring in-person student engagement and activities. Please join me in thanking Nadine for her leadership this past year. And Nadine, as president of the SBA, will now come forward to bring a greeting from the students and present the class gift. Nadine. Good morning, graduates and loved ones. My name is Nadine Dabah, and I've had the honor of serving as a student bar association for the past year. This year marks the 100th anniversary of our law school a century of excellence in legal education, and today, a legacy that we are now a part of. Starting law school a couple of months into a global pandemic was truly a gamble on our part. As if it wasn't intimidating enough, we were faced with an added element to the daunting construct of law school. However, our uncertainty, nervousness, and unease were constantly greeted with support, encouragement, and patience. The endless nights and long hours were welcomed with reward and success, and we have proven that we are not just capable of overcoming obstacles, but that we can thrive in difficult circumstances. While law school is a rigorous academic experience, it has also been a time to build relationships that will last throughout our professional lives. The pandemic may have made it hard to initially connect, but it has been a sight to see the relationships develop over the years. Walking through the halls of South Texas has become somewhat familial and uplifting, and I will miss running into each one of you and exchanging stories of stresses and busy schedules. But one thing remains true. Those exchanges helped give us the strength to push through, tackle another challenge, raise our expectations on what we could achieve, and arise to this moment. Whether it was a quick joke a word of encouragement or a friendly smile, those passing chats helped us persist. To our parents, families, and loved ones, this day belongs to you as much as it belongs to us. Your endless support, encouragement, and lots of patience haven't gone unnoticed. We're here today not purely out of the hard work and dedication elicited, but the kindness and grace you have shown us. So we're going to do this one more time, graduates. Please stand. Let us give our family and friends a standing ovation for everything they've done for us. Thank you. Graduates, I'm so excited to see all that you will conquer in our professional community and to keep up with your accomplishments. Looking around this room today, knowing what it took to arrive to this exact moment, I'm imbued with a sense of pride and honor, and I can't wait to see what the future has in store for us. It is now my pleasure to present Dean Barry with a 2023 class gift, a sincere showing of school support, but more importantly, a way of saying thank you and showing our appreciation to everything South Texas has offered and empowered us with. Thank you, South Texas College of Law, Houston, and thank you, Class of 2023, for everything over the past three years. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you, students, for your generosity. We're fortunate today to be joined by our South Texas Alumni Association president, Jennifer Stogner, from the class of 2006. In addition to being a most successful attorney, Jennifer is a proud and fierce advocate for South Texas. Jennifer, please come forward and share a warm alumni welcome to our new graduates.
Good morning, graduates. Good morning, family. Congratulations. Well done. I'm here today to welcome you to our alumni family. Once you walk across the stage, get your diploma, move the tassel over, you will become part of our 16,000 strong alumni family. And I hope that you will join us. I hope that you will enjoy the practice of law with us together. When you have issues, when you have problems, when you're not sure what to do, when you need support, career advice, come to us. We're here for you. You know, I started law school, and I hate to date myself, but I started law school 20 years ago. And the first day of orientation, I looked around and I, I was nervous. I didn't know anyone. I was from Corpus Christi. I'd never lived in Houston. And a cute guy with a pair of glasses, um, you know, seemed nice. Um, and lo and behold, I ended up marrying that man. We won a national title together in mock trial. Um, and he's still putting up with me today and our three children. Um, so that's probably a good thing. Uh, but I came to South Texas because it's my father's law school. 49 years ago, my dad sat in the same seats you're sitting in and graduated from South Texas. And I'm fortunate enough to have found even more family here. I hope you will join that family too. Most of my best friends are people I met in law school. The godfathers of all of my children all went to law school with us. Y'all started law school at such a strange time, but you are our 100th class. And the one thing that they say these days is that people disengage after they leave school. Well, y'all started things differently and I'd like you to be different. I would like to challenge you as part of our alumni family to participate 100%. Come to happy hour events, come meet your peers, come meet your colleagues, come meet the judges, the board members. Enjoy a conversation with faculty outside of school and unrelated to the exams you don't have to take anymore. <laughs> but seriously, fellow family members, thank you so much for the support you have provided to these graduates. Make sure you thank them too once all this is over. I hope to see you at our next event. Good luck on the bar exam and welcome to our alumni family. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. We so appreciate your commitment to South Texas and to our alumni. And now I have a very special privilege, the opportunity to introduce our commencement speaker, the Honorable Nathan L. Hecht, Chief Justice of the Texas Supreme Court. Chief Justice Hecht was appointed to the District Court in 1981 and was elected to the Court of Appeals in 1986. He's been elected to the Supreme Court seven times from 1988 through the present and has been Chief Justice for the past decade. He is the longest serving member of the court in Texas history, the longest tenured Texas judge in active service. He is held in the highest esteem by his peers across the country and is regarded as one of the most skilled, thoughtful, and forward-thinking Chief Justices of the state courts across the nation. Before taking the bench, he was a partner in the Locke firm in Dallas, holds a Bachelor of Arts degree with honors in philosophy from Yale University, and his Juris Doctorate degree, cum laude, from the Southern Methodist University School of Law. Most important, perhaps, is he is an advocate for justice and is especially committed to access to justice, ensuring that those who do not have means still have the ability to obtain service and benefits in the legal system. This makes him a particularly poignant speaker for us today. We are grateful and honored to have him with us. Please welcome the Honorable Nathan Hecht. Thank you, Dean. <clears throat> Thanks to um, all of you, um, graduates, um, family, um, friends. Everybody's excited. Your creditors are excited. <laughs> you made it. You made it. The first COVID-19 class. Remember when you started? The July bar exam had just been canceled because state and local gatherings were restricted to the public. A never-before-tried 
online exam was set for October for those who were daring enough to stake their future on an experimental bar exam. You won't have to do that. Meanwhile, law schools were scrambling to provide classes online. And that had its pluses, right? Because when you were online and the professor asked you a particularly hard question, you could say, I'm sorry, professor, you're breaking up. <laughs> it must be your signal. Uh, but then there was, there were the downsides, the lack of time to commiserate with each other in libraries and hallways, the time that you miss socializing during a very intense time in your lives. It's been a time of change. Lawyers hate change. It's genetic for us. It's in our souls. And suddenly, change is thrust upon us every way we turn. As president of the National Conference of Chief Justices in 2020, I saw courts across the country scrambling to stay open, whatever open meant with travel and meeting limitations. I saw them scrambling to tech up with better computer, computer equipment and Zoom training. I never used Zoom before the pandemic. I thought Zoom meant to hurry. <laughs> and all of a sudden, everybody's on Zoom. And it's making proceedings available which couldn't be conducted otherwise, a new word that we've come to use in our jurisprudence, remotely something we never did before. Like courts, the practice too was navigating. Would there be less legal work? Would firms need as many associates? Could they work from home? What would clients think? COVID-19 has taken terrible tolls in life and health, in livelihood and financial, financial stability, in personal stress, and well-being. For all the bad, one good thing the virus has done is this. It has forced the legal profession and the justice system to respond to the public, to its users, its customers, in ways long and desperately needed. It's a shame for too long we forced people to go to court to protect their rights, to get justice, when they couldn't afford the transportation, the daycare, and the time off work, much less the legal fees. With in-person family proceedings, 80% no-shows was standard and acceptable. With Zoom, it's flipped to 80% show-ups. Family proceedings are but one illustration of the kinds of change the virus has made in the legal system. As a friend has said, COVID-19 was certainly not a disaster we wanted. It may have been a disaster we needed. And now that we're getting the hang of it, what else could we change? How about the way civil cases are processed, moving from our basic one-size-fits-all justice system to a more differentiated, fairer, efficient, 21st century system? How about the best ways for a criminal justice system to protect society from the violent while rehabilitating minor offenders, decriminalizing delinquency and redemption? How about improving access to justice and legal services for the very poor by setting up high-tech kiosks with the technology we are learning to handle in places easy to reach so that people can meet with legal aid providers and courts in court proceedings without going downtown offices and the courthouses. The opportunities are vast, and having survived an historic pandemic, you're ready. The virus was frightening. It was frustrating. The public needed direction from their governments to stay well, physically and economically. But scientists disagree. Policymakers vacillated. And politicians pointed fingers. As a result, 
public distrust of institutions has grown, including courts. People's reaction to a court decision they don't like, whichever way it goes, abortion, diversity, immigration, elections, religious freedom, even murder, you name it, whichever way it goes, their reaction is not just that the decision was bad, but that the courts are bad. As the law develops, decisions and perceptions of decisions will change. But striking at courts themselves, delegitimizing them as institutions of government is a blow to society itself. Graduates, I am confident that you are ready to meet these changes, to help us with them. You're grappling with COVID-19 here in the Academy has prepared you to take new looks at the way our justice system functions, to envision improvements, and to make those improvements happen. You'll find the best ways to use remote proceedings while preserving important personal interaction and the majesty of the courtroom. You'll find the best courses between punishment and redemption. You will explain and demonstrate that the rule of law is not infallible, but it is indispensable to freedom. You will remind the public that they can disagree with a decision and still, rem and still respect the judge or jury who made it. And here's how. With persuasion, as divisions in our society have deepened, the idea that civil discourse can change people's minds has become foreign. But that's what you dealt with throughout your years at South Texas, taking both sides, arguing both sides of a case, understanding the arguments one way and the other way, persuading one another, persuading juries, persuading courts that this, this is a better course. In the profession you are entering, we need persuaders more than crusaders, convincers more than combatants, advocates who can win over rather than beat down. South Texas College of Law Houston is known throughout the nation for decades, throughout the world, for its training in advocacy, in argument that is both civil and strong. Law school has enveloped you in a culture of persuasion and shown you the power of ideas and words and given you the tools to use them. And now it's your turn to take on the changes that will keep our justice system not only the best in the world, but the best in the history of the world. 49 years ago, I sat where you do now, having come what seemed a long way, anxious for what lay ahead. I've been blessed to spend almost my entire legal career in service to the judiciary. I hope your life in the law will be as rewarding. I'm confident it will be. Members of the class of 2023, your future awaits. We're counting on you. We'll be there for you. We'll work together. Together we'll persuade changes in our justice system that will make it better for all who come for its protections. I know some of you will be traveling outside this great state to practice. I'm sorry for you. <laughs> but whether you're staying put or traveling, on behalf of 3,200 Texas judges and 110,000 Texas lawyers, I welcome you to the profession. God bless you. Thank you, Chief Justice Hecht.
Graduates, we have now come to that part of the ceremony that you have been waiting for. Please join me in welcoming to the stage or to the podium Associate Dean Cherry Taylor and momentarily Dr. Derek Fincham and Professor Sharon Finnegan to present our graduates. Candidates for the Doctor of Jurisprudence degree, please rise. Dean Barry, on behalf of the faculty of South Texas College of Law, Houston, we present to you these candidates and certify that upon graduation, they will have met the requirements of the college for the Doctor of Jurisprudence degree. We recommend that these degrees be conferred. Thank you, Dean Taylor. Graduates. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors of South Texas College of Law, Houston, and subject to certification by the faculty that each of you has fulfilled the requirements of the degree, I hereby confer on you the degree of Doctor of Jurisprudence with all its rights and privileges. Congratulations. Will the first row of graduates please remain standing? All other graduates please sit. And we will begin the procession. Adelayo Aransola Arasanya. Amna, Amna Ali. Adam Andreski. Anthony Oyo. Kristen Page Oust. Dana Eleanor Mansour Bader. Jordan Diane Barley, summa cum laude. Nicole Barrera. Brian Bayless. Jessica Brooke Bell. Nazreen Bennis. Zachary Victor Biganowski, magna cum laude. Jet Black. Christopher Ryan Bowen, summa cum laude. Andrew Bowman.
Brandon Bowman. David Bradle, cum laude. Joshua Andrew Brenner. Anna Brown. John Bruce. Alexandria Julia Bryant. Zoya Bukhari. Grant Bullwinkle, summa cum laude. Zachary Shane Burkett. Leah Christine Nicotra Cadenia. Cum laude. Alyssa Marie Kanya, cum laude. Lionel Zachary Carrion. Iteria Carroll. Harrison Alexander Cass, cum laude. Marissa Ceballos. Christian Cernusek. Sabria Shaheen. Jasmine Chavez. Valeria Chavez. Tyler Joseph Siavera, magna cum laude. Javon Xavier Cole. Jenna Connors. Adrian Contreras, Jr. Elena Riabova Contreras. <laughs> Stephanie Lee Cooksey. <laughs> Jennifer Michelle Cordell. Alejandro Cortez. <laughs> Emily Elizabeth Cotton. <laughs> Odalis Covarubias.
Anita Jordan Creech. <laughs> Bonnie May Creed, cum laude. Derek Ernest Cruz, summa cum laude. <laughs> Junie Delise. <laughs> Sydney Danielle Daniels, summa cum laude. Michael D. Davis, Jr., cum laude. <laughs> Clarissa Lizette Delator. <laughs> Anthony M. Delorio. Kyle Everett Domain. <laughs> Lindsay Rebecca Duff, summa cum laude. <laughs> Miles Dunn. Anthony Albert Edward. <laughs> Luis Escobar. <laughs> Helene Rivas Espinoza. Sherelle Fagan. Nathan Farmer. Lance Felicien. Maria Alejandra Fielder. Emma Fielding. <laughs> Lacey Fleshman, magna cum laude. <laughs> Laura Mercedes Flores. Samantha Lizette Fonseca. <laughs> Terry Ford. <laughs> Trevor Ford. Sadie Elizabeth Fawcett. <laughs> Jacob Frisbee, magna cum laude. <laughs> Sandrita Fuentes. Marissa Celeste Garcia. Robert Benjamin Garcia.
Victor Garcia. Maha Gaius, summa cum laude. Ryan Cody Glenn. Riley Goldweight, summa cum laude. Jacqueline Anastasia Gomez. <laughs> Abigail Hope Gonsulon. Guadalupe Gonzalez. Eric Scott Gonzalez. Kirsten Grady. Garrett Gray Cum Laude. John Gregory. David Thurman Gresh. David Griffin, cum laude. Carlos Gutierrez, Jr. Corey Royce Gwen. Matthew Dylan Hammonds. Jonathan Hardegree. <laughs> Jacob Alexander Harry. <laughs> Hannah Hawk. Catherine Healy. Jonathan Herrera. Dylan Higgins. Elizabeth Hers. <laughs> Brian Holman. <laughs> Janae Holt. Reed Homan. <laughs> Bennett Huddleston, cum laude. <laughs> Oniechi Ibe.
Mohammed Hassan Jaffrey. Palam John Colbert. Raymond W. Johnson. Allison Michelle Jones. Marissa Lorena Juarez. Patrick J. Kale. Matthew Kyle Kersey. Mikhail Shaquille Khan. Andrew Scott Kidda, magna cum laude. Mary Eleanor Kilpatrick, magna cum laude. Neil Klein, cum laude. Casey L. Arman. Pierce Lamson. Barrett Langford. James Lee. Francis J. Leaf. Kendall Wan Lee, magna cum laude. <laughs> Ashley Camille Leger. <laughs> Taylor Lane Ledger, summa cum laude. Sarika Jean Leggi, cum laude. Gabriela A. Lopez Ruperto. Alexandra McLean. Marcus Liss, magna cum laude. <laughs> Natasha Mullick. <laughs> Boston Mallory, magna cum laude. Miranda Mann, cum laude. (laughs) 
Raul Martinez Balderas. Adam Woodrow McCoy. Victoria Boss McElraith, cum laude. Emma Perez McKellar, cum laude. Caitlin R. McKinney. Brittany L. McDonald. <laughs> Paul Sufwat Mgod Mewat. <laughs> Azarel D. Medina. Christian Mendesal Ball, magna cum laude. <laughs> David William Mestemaker. <laughs> Brendan James Miguez. Rachel L. Miller. <laughs> Molly Elizabeth Millslagel. Aaron G. Misley. Emily Mitchell. Sierra Lauren Mormon. Laís Esther Morales, cum laude. <laughs> Ashley Marie Mosey. John Foster Myers. Kathleen Megan Nielsen. <laughs> Trip Wynn. <laughs> Brian Waylon O'Day. Alvia E. Olvera, cum laude. Christopher H. Oxman. Teresa Pahutka. Julio Cesar Par Parpasen.
Urvi Patel, magna cum laude. Alec Perry. <laughs> Tara Olivia Perry, magna cum laude. Portland T. Pettigrew, summa cum laude. Twee Anna Pham. Natalie on Phi Lucas. <laughs> Cassidy Christine Potenzo Cum Laude. Eliana Marina Pulis, magna cum laude. Michael Jordan Pratt, Jr. Sarah Rachel Price. Jeanette Joyce Proa. Shane Patrick Puskar, cum laude. Irvin Kiraz. Nadine Raba, magna cum laude. <laughs> Joshua Mark Rob, the second, summa cum laude. <laughs> Tyler N. Ranhell. Timothy D. Rob Jr. <laughs> Vivek T. Reddy. <laughs> Aubrey Jane Richardson. Yadira Rivera. <laughs> Riley Dean Roden. <laughs> Willie Rodriguez the second. Zachary Rodriguez. <laughs> Catherine Rosendahl, cum laude. <laughs> David Avery Rout.
Sydney Elizabeth Rowett, cum laude. Pierce Cragen Ruiz. Luis Osvaldo Sanchez. Caitlin Carol Santibanez. Monique R. Sapp. Valeria Sasado. Madeline Schmidt, cum laude. Seema Chalet. Susan Marin Chi Rolong. Chien, pardon me. Grayson Samuel Sheena. <laughs> Stephanie Page Shoemaker. John Ryan Shoemake. Sarah Beth Singer. Bradley Wild Scary. Elijah Cole Smith. Joel D. Smith. Diana Soriano, cum laude. Elizabeth Alice Sorkin. Dylan Reed Spodek, cum laude. Joe Stevens, Jr. Lauren Morell Strickland. Kelly Elizabeth Stripling, magna cum laude. Elsa Suzanne Suelem Gomez. Kevin Michael Simzak. Tabitha Lynn Talibur. Emma E. Tan. Davis Trent Taylor the third.
Deshay Monet Taylor. <laughs> Trevor V. Thompson. Alexandra Ray Threlkill, cum laude. Benjamin Allen Tosh, cum laude. Sarah Amin Trad. Terry Tran. <laughs> Zachary David Trell, summa cum laude. <laughs> Quinn Ni Trong, magna cum laude. Ria Verghese, magna cum laude. Christian Vasquez. Veronica Vera. Shelby R. Walding. Elise Ann Walker, magna cum laude. Ray W. Walker. Shai Walker. <laughs> Linda Jane Walton, magna cum laude. <laughs> Hua Wang. Catherine Welch, magna cum laude. Megan no, no. Alex, excuse me, Megan Alexis Westerman. <laughs> Madeline Olivia Westrup. Ricky Glenn Whitehead, Jr. <laughs> Taylor O. Williams. Valerie Patterson Willis. <laughs> Stephen K. Wolf. <laughs> Ashley May Wollaston, summa cum laude. Alexander G. Zabak.
Vanessa M. Zaldana. Brandon Christian Zarati. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please join me in congratulating the class of 2023? Okay, we are almost done, but there's one last thing we need to do. So uh, family and friends, let's just pretend for a second that they're not here and we're going to talk about them for a second, all right? You have helped them get to this stage today, but your job is not done. Law is one of those degrees that Crossing the stage does not allow you to go and practice. Chief Justice Hecht likes to give people a little quiz. It's called the bar exam. <laughs> Until a candidate passes the bar exam, they're not licensed to practice law. And it's not an easy test. It's, in fact, it's a very challenging test. In February, 44% of the population passed the test. This is something they need to work for. But there is good news. Every student here can pass that test. So how do we guarantee that they can pass the test? Well, I did what every good dean should do. I typed into a chat bot the question, how do I guarantee that a student will pass the bar exam? Seriously, I did this last night. <laughs> Here's what it said. It had seven pieces of advice. Number one, start studying early. That's actually true. Uh, beginning this week. Number two, plan to study for 400 to 450 hours. That's also true. That's how many hours it takes to study. Number three, Create a study plan and stick to it. Number four, take practice exams. Number five, if you're struggling, ask for help. Number six, talk to your law school advisor and bar coaches. And number seven, stay positive and motivated. So why am I telling you these seven things that they need to do to pass the bar exam? because they won't be able to do it without your help. And there are three things that I would ask you to take away. Number one, every student has to put the work in the work. Whether that student's name is Taylor Ledger or somebody else, every student has to put in 400 to 450 hours. 
and they will need your assistance, your support, and your motivation to put in that time between now and July. Will you help them put in that time? <laughs> Second thing, everything on that list, every one of those seven, our law school can help them do. Please encourage them to come meet with our bar preparation team. They are the best in the state. I might put them they're the best in the country. Please help make sure that they are using our team. Will you encourage them to come work with us? That was a little tepid. We'll try that again. Will you encourage the, them to come work with us? Much better. Last thing, they are going to need your help. 450 hours is a lot. It is a tedious grind studying for this exam. They are going to need encouragement. That's where you come in. They're going to need support. That's where you come in. They're going to need to be reminded to take a shower. That's where you come in. <laughs> Please work with them. Please do not allow them to give up. Keep them motivated. Keep them positive. Help them through this process. Today is a wonderful, momentous occasion. But the finish line is in July. And the actual finish line is in October, when they open up the computer, log into the bar site, and they see their name on the pass list. That is the day we're working for. So friends and family, they need to put in the 400 to 450 hours. Will you help them? And then, then we celebrate, because that is the real finish line. Thank you. Welcome back, class. All right. Graduates, I will be very brief. You are our centennial class. We are thrilled to celebrate all that you have accomplished. We look forward to all that you will do. Make us proud. Today is a wonderful reflection on what you have accomplished in the face of adversity. You were stronger than other classes that came before you because you faced more challenges and you a overcame. Congratulations. We are concluded. Have a wonderful day.